Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the Airport Safety Channel. I am your host, Isaac Otu, and it is a privilege to have you join me in this week's presentation. Today, we are going back to our topic, how well do you know your facility? And we are focusing on parts of a runway. We are using an X14 Volume 1 Aerodromes 9th edition. And we are in the chapter 3. Today, we'll be dealing with runway 10 parts. In the previous week, we dealt with runway shoulders, runway shoulders. And I will encourage each and every one, if you have not watched the previous videos, kindly go back, subscribe, watch, and then come and continue with this presentation. Today, we are dealing with Annex 14, Chapter 3, Section 3, Runway 10 Parts. And the basic information is that Annex 14 states, that where the end of a runway is not served by a taxiway or a taxiway turn around, and where the code letter is D, E, or F, a runway turn path shall be provided to facilitate a 180 degree turn of aeroplanes. It also recommends that where the end of a runway is not served by a taxiway or a taxiway turn around, where the code letter is A, B, or C, a runway turn path should be provided, should be provided to facilitate a 180 degree turn of aeroplanes. Now, such areas, that is the turn path, may be useful if provided along a runway to reduce taxiing time and distance for aeroplanes which may not require the full length of the runway. So a runway turn part is required at the ends of the runway to facilitate a 180 degree turn and also may be located midway or at other portions of the runway for aircraft that do not need to use the full length of the runway. Let's look at this in picture formats and see what it is trying to tell us. Annex 14, the chapter 3, section 3, deals with runway 10 parts. Runway 10 parts. Now, this section of the annex says that where the end of a runway is not served by a taxiway. So, you can see a taxiway that helps the aircraft to link onto the runway and use the full length. Annex 14 is saying that when there is no taxiway, to help the aircraft to use the full length of the runway. There is no taxiway. So the second condition for providing a 10 part is that where the end of a runway is not served by a taxiway turn around. That means there's no way that the aircraft can turn and get back onto the runway to use the full length of the runway. If this doesn't exist, then you will have to provide a turn part for the runway. And where the runway is a code D, that is code D aircraft operates on that particular runway or the runway is used for code E operations, or you have code F operations on the runway, then it is a must that that particular runway should have a runway 10 part. That particular runway must be provided with a one with a runway 10 part that will facilitate a 180 degree turn of aeroplanes. That once the aeroplane uses or taxis on a runway, it can make a full 180 degree turn and then use the full length of the runway to take off. 
Now, runway ten parts can also be provided along any portion of the runway. This reduces the taxiing time and the distance for aircrafts that do not need to use the full length of the runway. Aircraft that do not need to use the full length of the runway. They can use the 10 parts that are located either midway or at other portions of the runway to make a turn and then take off. So, before we continue, I'd like to remind you to subscribe, like, and share to ensure that all your colleagues will also join and learn from this platform. Now, what do you think of the following? Which runway end has a 10 part? A, B, and C. Which one has a 10 part? Write it in the comments. Write it in the comments so that we will be able to discuss it as the week goes. On. Now, with the same runway, why is it that some runways do not have 10 parts? If you look on the picture, can you guess based on what we have mentioned? Can you guess why some of the runways do not have 10 parts? Now, this is a runway that has a display threshold and it has taxiway linking to the threshold and a 10 part beyond the threshold. The question is, does this runway need a 10 part? I want you to write in the comments. I want us to engage more in our presentations. So, what are the inspection requirements for the runway 10 parts are the inspection requirements for the runway 10 part now when inspecting runway 10 parts these are some of the things you must look out for and x14 says that the strength of runway 10 parts shoulders should be capable of withstanding the occasional passage of the aeroplane it is designed to save without inducing structural damage to the aeroplane and to the supporting ground vehicles that may operate on their shoulder. In other words, runway 10 parts also have shoulders. Remember, we did shoulders. We studied shoulders in the previous presentation. Kindly go back and look at that presentation to understand what shoulders are and what their purpose is. Alex 14 is saying that runway 10 parts should have shoulders and those shoulders should be as strong as the 10 parts that they are serving in order to allow occasional passage of aircraft without damaging the 10 part so when you are inspecting your runway 10 part check to see if it has shoulders and verify the stability or the strength of the shoulder of the 10 part also the runway 10 pass should be provided with shoulders of such widths as necessary to prevent surface erosion by jet blast. So the next reason or the next thing you should be inspecting is that there are no jet blast effects on your 10 pad because shoulders have been provided. What it means is that if there are no shoulders, you are likely to have jet blast causing erosion on or around your tempered and we don't want erosion erosion has the effect of damaging or reducing the lifespan of your pavement so you are supposed to inspect the shoulders and ensure that erosion is not having its fill day around your aerodrome also the surface of a runway ten pad should be so constructed or resurfaced as to provide surface friction characteristics at least equal to that of the adjoining runway. In other words, the quality of your tempered should be equal to, or if not even greater than that of the runway. The quality of your tempered should be equal to, or even if possible, greater 
than the runway. And if you are able to inspect these things, you'll be sure that your theme park will be serving the purpose for which it was constructed. Finally, let's have our bullet for the day. And today's bullet says, read, read. Aviation never remains the same. So read notices, read bulletins, read operational documents, and reread your SOPs. Read all documents that are in your aerodrome. The information might just be in time. I encourage you to read. Thank you for watching. Post your comments and questions. Subscribe and click the bell. Share with one and all. Thank you. See you.